Kia ora whanau. Tēnā koutou katoa. How are we? Mālo. What's up, G? Chair, bro? <laughs> nah. Um, this one's going to be about uh, leaving. Why I left and if you are going through the transition of waking up, as I would say, as I would call it, or yeah, like you've woken up and you, you know, you're looking yourself in the mirror and you're going, fuck. Like you just don't like your reflection. You don't like what you've become. You don't like the path you're going down. The future looks bleak, you know? So I'm going to share a little bit about why I left and a, the proper way to leave, you know, because there, there is a proper way to leave, you know, um, but we'll get into that. So the reason I left was because a lot of shit was happening. A lot of shit was happening and I was finding myself starting to question the cause. Like, what are we at? Like, what am I up to? Because the the people around me were suffering. You know, like um, uh, my kid, uh, my ex-relationship and stuff like that. It was all suffering. So... It was all good while you were on the road with the boys and you're going partying and that, yeehaw, yeah, you know, you're doing like that sort of stuff, you're drinking yourself stupid, you know, and the, the care factor goes out the door, you know, just because when you're high and drunk, you don't care. You don't care until the next day or until you come down. What goes up must come down. And that's why you see a lot of shit that's happening today with people that are on crack, you know, and they're doing shit when they're high, you know, and then when they come down, it's too late by then because they were, you know, they are coming to their senses on the come down while in lockup. Now, I can't even imagine what that would be like. I know what a come down is like off uh, cocaine, MDMA. I know what that's like. I've never done crack, so I can only imagine because it's bad on the coke and the MDMA. It is bad, so... You know, you start to, oh shit, like, you know, you're sort of looking at your phone, see if your phone rings, you know, the next day, you're like, oh shit, what did I do, you know? It's all that sort of stuff, you know? And I got to a point where I was just, I just looked in the mirror, man, and just pretty much broke down, you know? Broke down and just, it was a totally different person staring back. Um, and, It wasn't until I had my my son that I started to notice all this stuff, you know, I was like far out. And then I noticed the hurt and the trauma that I was putting my whanau through, you know, and um, so I had to pull my head in, you know, I had to pull my head in. And along the way, I suffered from anxiety and depression. Um, I had never had that in my life, never had that in my life. And now the only like, when I look back, that all started around the same time I started to use cocaine. It, you know, because I was always headstrong. I had never had anxiety and stuff like that, you know? And my life started to go downhill when I first signed on and I, I entered the world into gangs. And, um, you know, because nothing can prepare you for it. Now, I'm only talking about my experiences. I know it will be different for people that are born into the gang life, you know, and I know that it is completely different for you guys, you know, because you know no different, you know, if you know, your whanau has been in it and it's just passed down, you know, so you don't know any better, you know. So I went through, I tried to commit suicide. Um... And that was in June in 2019. And um, that's that's something for maybe another post. You know, I'll dive right into that. You know, and um, I'd been on a two-day bender, you know, with the boys, you know, because it was my birthday. And then that was the last straw for me, man. Um, I just, I ended up in hospital and then... I come home 
down to my house because I had split from my previous relationship and you realize that you're alone you know you're alone and the thought of being alone is quite scary when you have people around you all the time you know and there's a lot of people that can't be alone with their thoughts because that's when everything comes flooding in you know it's like oh shit and that's why a lot of people turn to marijuana and stuff like that like I did you know I turned to marijuana just to suppress the emotions and feelings because I didn't know how to deal with them, you know? And so I tried to hide it. And um, and I went through that all alone, you know, which I know a lot of people have and a lot of people commit suicide. And you hear a lot about, just reach out, bro, and talk about it. But there's not many people that will actually be there to be the shoulder and the ear. So I just, I chose that, I chose to go that alone, you know, I, I just, you know, I had to knuckle down and actually sort my shit out, and um, I had to put my pen to paper, and I had to write down where I was, and while doing that, a lot of emotions were coming out, because if you can put your pen to paper, and dive deep inside, and if your emotions don't come out, you're not going deep enough, you know, you've got to go deep, like, You've got to have a raw and honest porno conversation with yourself, you know? It may sound a bit weird, you know, for for the people that are just starting their journey into that world and stuff like that, you know, because it's exciting, it's new, it's like, yeah. And trust me, your time will come. Your time will come. I 100%, you will not avoid it. You will not avoid jail or finding yourself in a dark hole where you just don't want to be on earth anymore. You you will get to that point. You will get to that point. And which I hope you don't, but then again, I hope you do because that's growth. And that's when you start to connect the dots and you start to think, man, there is more to life than this shit. There's, there, there is more to life than this shit. You know, and small steps will, you know, the snowball effect small steps will turn into bigger and bigger and bigger steps you know and before you know it you'll be a completely different person you know you may not see that straight away people on the outside they will notice it first you know they'll notice it first but um so i found myself in that hole and i was just i wanted change the road that I was going down was only leading me to death, whether it be a dead soul in jail or a dead person in the ground, you know? Because your emotions and stuff will leave if you're suppressing them all the time. Sorry, they won't leave. They will be there for when you're ready to actually go through them again. But there's a lot of people who are very good at suppressing their feelings and putting that hard exterior on, yeah, I'm bigger, tough, I'm this and that, but even the biggest and toughest guys, man, they will break down and cry eventually, I guarantee it, you know, I've had big tough mates that have committed suicide, and I was just shocked, like, what, because I had a guy that, that I actually looked up to, and I was, you know, big, tough guy, strong as, he had everything, but he was suffering in silence, you know, until he was found, he was found, he was found at his workplace, hanging from the rafters, and, um, yeah, it's, it was definitely the last guy that I thought would have done that, you know, so, um, those black, that black hole and those dark thoughts, they hit everybody and anybody, you know, and they will hit you with the amount of shit you put yourself through, you know, so, I want to change, man, and I started to make changes prior to that. You know, I was doing, um, I was doing barbecues for the homeless and stuff like that, just because it felt good. You know, it felt good, you know, to pay it forward, and that's what really sparked me. Was like, man, there is more to life. You know, there's more to life than just being a shit cunt, going out on the weekends, getting pissed, cheating, drugs, you name it whatever and then but then you come then after you after you come down 
you know, from the high, you know, you might come right maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, you, you know, I was usually feeling all right. <clears throat> and I would slowly forget about all those shit thoughts and that, that I was having, you know, until next time I had the piss. And then it's like, bang, you're back in the dark hole. Fuck. Now, this is not just for gang members. This is for anybody who is stuck where they are. Well, you, know, you feel like you're stuck. You feel like nothing's going to change in your life because you're only thinking about the here and now. You know? And it took me a long time to actually work out that I had to plan ahead you know, because I was... Never one of those guys that planned ahead, yeah. You know, I was like, nah. Yeah, you know, I lived my life a quarter mile at the time, hard and fast. I just, yeah. But for a long, happy life, that it's it's not right. It's not right. You have to plan for the future, you know. And once I worked that out, then I put my pen to paper. Then I can. I started to put slow little steps in, you know, and. I was making a lot of changes while I was in that walk, you know, while I was in that part of my life. And no matter how hard I tried, I kept falling back into that dark hole and I just couldn't work it out. I was like, fuck. And then I started to watch motivational stuff on um, YouTube and that. And, you know, because I wanted the change, I wanted it. And then I come to realize that the life that I was living, because the last thing that I blamed it on was the gangs, you know, was my lifestyle within the club because I had cut back the drinking a little bit. I had knocked back the drugs, you know, a little bit and <laughs> I still couldn't work it out, but it was the environment that I was surrounded in that was actually doing me no good. Yeah. So, I worked out that I had to take myself out of that environment and that was a hard pill to swallow because I, although I enjoyed it, I really enjoyed that life, but I knew in the long run that it was getting me nowhere. So I had to make sacrifices, you know, I had to make sacrifices for my whanau. And I know that sounds very cliche because everybody's saying that these days, but I've seen people are following through until they feel like shit again and then they're going backwards. You know, they're going back. Don't go back. You gotta push through those hard times, man. I have persevered and pushed through those hard times and still pushing through those hard times two years on. You know? It's not gonna be easy, but hey. You were the one that put yourself there. So you have to look at the road it took to get there, that time that it took to get there. When you want change and you want to make changes and stuff, it's not going to happen like that. It, it, it just isn't. It is not going to happen like that. You are going to want it to happen like that, but it's not going to work out like that. That's why you've got to ride it out. You know, you've got to back yourself, you know, and you've got to constantly remind yourself why you want this change because it's the heartache and shit you go through that when you leave and you notice everybody that changes up on you. That is enough to make some people go, oh man, stuff this, I'm going back, you know. Those are for the people that leave properly. Now, by leaving properly, in both, in both clubs that I was with, when I was the president in one and the national president, a lot of guys want that brotherhood, you know? They want that brotherhood and then they come in and then, like I did, you start to slowly work out, oh shit, you know, this is not really what I signed up for, but you just roll with it, you know, you just roll with it. Because you feel stuck, you don't know how to get out because you hear all these stories about people getting shot and stabbed up, which they are true, they are true. But, now this is just only my opinion, you know, because I've sat with a few people and the thing that pisses the club off the most when you leave is if you hide away, if you vanish, if you ghost the club, if you ghost your president, if you, 
you don't, if you cut all communication and you just think that this will go away. It won't go away because you'll be constantly going like this. And it's, it will not be a nice feeling, you know? Because even sometimes I'm doing that when I've done nothing wrong, you know? I left that world the proper way, you know? So what I done was at, was on the national run. Nobody knew, and I called a meeting. And I, you know, and I just said to the boys like, this is no longer my walk. This is, you know, my son, he's number one. Um, although I still have love for the club, like I would never partake in nothing ever again like that, you know, because yeah, it's, it's yeah. Once you see the grass on the other side of the fence is actually greener, there's no way you will look back, you know. So I left the proper way. I told everybody, face to face, you know, not over text message, not in a little letter or send your patch back in the post. You have to front up. You've got to front up because that club showed you love when you joined, you know. The brothers showed you love when you joined. So do not piss on that and run away, you know. You had balls when you joined, right? So unless your balls got chopped, chopped off, you've still got them hanging between your legs. Grab them, squeeze them, know that they're there, pick them up and live your life. Live your life. If that's not what you want anymore, say it. Have a one-on-one -on -one talk with your president first or, you know, whoever you trust, you know, whether it be a high-ranking high ranking officer or, but show respect. You've got to show respect on the way out because if you don't, that's when you're going to run into a lot of trouble, you know. You will run into a lot of trouble. Hey, and when you do leave the proper way, You've got to understand that the guys that are still there, they're not thinking how you think yet. So they are seeing it as a sort of sort of uh, betrayal or, you know, like, you know, you're turning your back on them. But we know that's not true, but they don't, you know. We just want to better ourselves and we want change within ourselves and our lives. They don't understand that yet because they're not at that part of their life yet. So be prepared to take a bit of shit because you are going to get shit. There's no way you can live your life in that world and then leave and just think it's all gonna be rosy because it's not, it is not gonna be all rosy. But don't, don't let that scare you from leaving because what will be harder is where you stay in a place and you're just, you're just going with the flow. I hate that saying, yeah, bro, I'm just going with the flow. If you go with the flow, you're going to end up in a place you don't want to be. You've got to take control of your life. You have to take control, right? You've got to take control and it's on you, you know? You have two feet. Use them. They've carried you. They have carried you all this way. They will still carry you. It's You're putting barriers in your head thinking, the worst, you know? And I can tell you now, 100%, whatever it is in life, nothing is ever as bad as it first seems. It's never that bad. It is never, ever that bad. Because when you hear something that that is bad, you go straight to the worst thought ever. Oh, shit. It's not going to be that bad. But, like I said, you will cop shit. Right, so I had to take myself out of that environment. To this day, I still don't really talk to them. That's not saying I think I'm better than them. No way. I don't think I'm better than anybody. What I'm trying to get across is that you can't heal and fix yourself in the same environment that has made you ill. You know, it just will not work. I tried it and you want to make changes, but you know, like you don't want to really give everything yet because you know, like, you know, the money side of things and, and that's another thing too. Like 
if you don't feel you fit into society, you're going to stay there because that's all you think you've got. You know? But I can guarantee you, life will 100% get better, 100%. But you've got to be willing to roll with the punches and ride it out. You know? You've got to. You'll notice when you get to a place of, man, shit's actually falling into place. You know? You'll have little small wins along the way, you know, you'll, you know, and then you'll start to feel good. There will be those times where you just think, oh, fuck, this is just too hard, man. You know, I've got no experience with working, you know, I've got no idea what I want to do. Stop thinking of the here and now. You don't have to have it all sorted here and now, you know. As you start making small changes, like I said, it will lead to the bigger ones. Your next step will appear in front of you and you'll be like, oh, shit. You know, you will slowly find your path. You know, but if you sit there and try and work it all out at once. 99% you're not even going to try and change just because you've put all these barriers and all these walls up inside your head already. You know, that are not true because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. But positive stuff leads to more positive stuff, yeah? If you stay in a negative world, where do you think you're going to end up? You're going to end up angry, bitter, twisted. And before you know it, like I've talked to a lot of life members, man, they hate the... F they never wanted to leave the club, but they wanted to make big changes. So they wanted to put their whanos first and stuff like that. It just doesn't work in that world because at the... At, one phone call at night, if something's gone down in town, you've got to be prepared to get tooled up and go. Yeah? For the cause. For the cause. It's that fucking idiot that caused that trouble in town. But you get pulled into it. Yeah? I got pulled into a lot of shit. And 95% of the shit was never my shit. But I had to go around and clean everyone's bums. Yeah? So, yeah. For the brotherhood but then if you do make the changes and you do squeeze your nuts and you do leave and you want to pick your balls up and leave and live your best life you will see that those fellas that you were there for they won't be there for you they will not be there for you because they're all about themselves it most people are genuinely all about themselves especially in that world it's all, it's it's an ego driven world who's who's got the most cars who's got the most gold on their bike who's got the fattest chains who's got the most sovereigns and like it's bullshit you know now like i said i'm only speaking about my experiences so i'm not saying that the people that are doing that there is are like that because use your own person i'm just sharing my experiences you know so i'm only talking about myself you know and like i said with the last one i hope it hits people in in the heart and then they want to make changes and i hope that this video can actually help you help support you along the way too because if i can do it and i come from the top you can most definitely do it you know you you can most definitely do it anybody can do it anybody can do anything in life you know you know the people that you're looking up to in life what makes them special? Nothing makes them special. You know, you are just as special as them. But you put your own barriers and blocks up in your head to think that you can't be like that or you can't have that because, oh, you know, I've, I've you know, poor me, poor me sort of stuff. But you've got to back yourself, you know. Back yourself like you back the brothers. Back yourself. Yeah. So yeah, that's the reason I left was just because I didn't like the person that I had changed that I had turned into, but I didn't notice I had changed until I got to around my birthday and just I just wow. I just didn't like what was staring back, you know. And that was enough for me to just that's it. Then I had to put my pen and 
to paper and make steps to leave that world, to leave that behind. You cannot have one foot in that world and one foot in a new direction. You'll end up doing the splits. It will not work. You know, you got to have two feet on either side of the fence. Because if you don't, you, you're going to find yourself in this vicious circle, man. And you're going to be blaming everybody and everything else but yourself. You know? So, love, light, and happiness, whanau. I'll leave that there. And, uh, yeah, I hope it helps. And I hope it... Um, and I hope it can give you the courage to make the next steps in your in your life that whatever it may be that you choose to do, you know. Yeah. I hope you find the courage, man, because the grass is green on the other side of the fence. You know that saying that oh the grass is not always green on the other side of the fence? In this case, it most definitely is. So Kelda. Have a good week, Fano.